Welcome to Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frankie Lee Slater. We are living in an era unlike any other, a time when the wisdom drawn from every culture, from all of time and creation is available. What is possible is the next evolutionary step in human consciousness, a maturation, if you will. Today will be the second part of a two-part series on living the unlimited life, a conversation with Dr. Bhaskaram Pillai, referred to affectionately as Sri Guruji, a guru from the ancient Tamil Siddha tradition of southern India. What I like about the Tamil Siddhas and Sri Guruji particularly, since he's the flesh and blood representative I know personally, is the practical nature of their teachings and practices and their understanding that life can and should be lived in total abundance. Admittedly, this is a stretch for many of us, but what we're going to examine today is how this has much more to do with our limited beliefs and the imprints of society than with what's real. I like to think of things in terms of being an artist of life, of bringing everything that we do and think to the level of art, of skill, observation, and creativity. This is what Guruji is all about. And it is with great pleasure that he is with us here today. Guruji, welcome. Unlimited thinking. We live so much of the time in negativity and, uh, and we harp so much on our mistakes. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about uh, being able to live the unlimited life and where one can put one's attention so that that can be different. The change has to occur right now. I don't believe in waiting. I ask people always, what do you wait for? And who do you wait for? I simply do not believe that one has to wait to accomplish things. Everything is in the in the now. N-O-W. Only if you understand how to access the now. The now has everything in it. I once took a student of mine to the beach and I asked him to go into one of these uh, binoculars they have mm -hmm. and then look at the ship which is far away, which is not visible. And then he looked through the binocular and then said the ship was there right in front of him. And I told him, look at this. The ship which is not available for perception through naked eye is made possible through this instrument. Mm -hmm. And what is involved in it? Light. Light can make this illusion to happen. Mm -hmm. Light helps you to manifest things make things to come near to you. Right. You have to zoom in, not zoom out. Okay? Right. Zoom in as early as possible the life that you want to live. Do not think that I have to make enough money, uh, save enough money for down payment for a house after two years. If you think that way, that is going to be the reality. Mm -hmm. If you say that I want the house right now and don't think about down payment or anything because the moment you begin to think in terms of down payment and the inability to buy right now, then you will make it into a reality. Right. Kill your logic. The logic has created all negativity here. God doesn't think how this is going to happen. When you live God consciousness, everything is right now. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the light, I, I know that you work with the light in, in different rituals and also in um, the, the grace of the Guru giving the light through your eyes. Could you speak something about that and what actually happens with the Shakti pot? Creation and light are synonymous because Creation is from unmanifest level to manifest level. 
when it is unmanifest there is no light mm -hmm. that's why we have even in english the expression i want to bring this to light mm -hmm. so bringing to light is making something to come to life so if we understand the principles of light then we can do anything that we want to do and it is going to take a lot of research on the part of the scientists to understand the phenomenon of light the sun for example is the greatest light that we have and what is sun sun is life without the sun there is no life possible so if we could understand the energy of the of the sun the light energy of the sun then we will have a greater understanding about life mm -hmm. now i know that scientists are working on to understand uh, the solar power in livermore uh, california mm -hmm. billions of dollars are being spent to understand this but the siddhas understood it in a different way in order to understand the sun you have to become the sun you have to become the light mm -hmm. when you become the light then everything is clear to you so we have to increase more light in our consciousness then we don't commit mistakes mm -hmm. so we're going to show a video of your doing shakti pot which will give people a sense of that experience that comes now of course it's over television but i know my own experience of watching the video i've been able to get some of the light from that and how it works and then we'll discuss it afterwards thank you my eyes are the windows to your own consciousness looking at them you look at your own authentic self you instantaneously recognize that you are not the body that you are not the mind nor you are the ego you are god now I'm going to lead you to a meditation called the Shakti Pata. Shakti Pata means the transference of energy from the guru to the student. Now, look at the movement of my eyes. As they move, watch your breathing. Now I am entering your right eye as light. The light erases the thought patterns in the right eye. The eyeball loses its darkness and becomes white and luminous. Now I am entering your left eye as light. The light erases the thought patterns in the left eye. The eyeball loses its darkness and becomes white and luminous. Now 
Now both the eyes are devoid of darkness. They are both white and luminous. I am now going to open your third eye. Focus attention on the third eye in between the eyebrows. I am sending my grace through your third eye. My grace is like a crystal head drilling into the third eye, into the pituitary and the pineal. is like a crystal head drilling into the third eye, into the pituitary and the pineal. Let's talk about the, the Shakti pot and, and exactly what's going on. In this video, you, you talk about the pineal and the pituitary gland. Um, and of course, we've heard of the third eye when it comes to meditation. Can you explain exactly what goes on when the light goes in there? Our limited thinking is due to the inability of the pituitary to produce unlimited thoughts. The pituitary knows only to produce the thought elixirs that are responsible for limited thinking at this, at this point. <laughs> I like that term. <laughs> now, when the pituitary uh, begins to become more alive, more sensitive, then it will secrete higher thought frequencies, elixirs which will make higher thought frequencies, which will make you to think outrageous thoughts. Mm. 
negativity will be suppressed. Then you won't think, I can't do this, or I'm not good enough to do that. All these uh, limited thinking will vanish. The moment the pituitary begins to uh, vibrate at a higher speed, then you will know that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. And not only you will know that everything is possible, but also you will begin to live it. Mm. So, uh, in the case of the Shakti Pot, when, when you give the light to people, it, it sort of quickens their experience? Yes. Is that what happens? What I try to do in the Shakti Pot is send my energy or share my energy mm -hmm. with the people around by myself remaining silent. In this video, I, I give some instructions. Right. But in regular darshan, I don't talk at all. Right. I just remain silent for the entire session. One of the most amazing things to me, I think, was when I realized first that when you still the eyes, you still the, the thinking. That right. you can actually maintain that stillness, that right. that itself. Um, it's, it, it's such a simple thing that we, I was never taught, and now that I know it, you know. Now scientists have come to understand that this, mm -hmm. talk about the REM, rapid eye movement, right. and say that the activity in the brain are related to the movement of the eyes. Mm -hmm. But the Siddhas had known this uh, from times in the memoriam, right. when they thought that if you could still the eye, you could still your conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And when you still your conscious mind, then you have access to the unconscious mind, which is unlimited. Right. So people have to be uh, taught this simple, very simple technique, like just keep sitting in a place and then keep your eyeballs still <laughs> and experience higher states of consciousness. Now, you've also said that uh, the mind, it, being in the mind so much, thinking as much as we do, just exhausts us. It physically exhausts us. And uh, sometimes I know that when you work with meditation, you work with spreading the attention to other parts of the body. How does that work? See, the mind is like a vampire. It uh, consumes a lot of our energy, and uh, which is being used for intellection. Uh, thinking thoughts and which are of this nature one thought comes and then it cancels out other thought and then it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. We are never aware of other parts of the body because uh, we are so focused on the mind. Mm -hmm. Now when you in meditation when you just close your eyes then you, the energy that goes into the mind consciousness slows down and then you begin to focus on different parts of the body. Okay. So you have, for instance, uh, the hearing consciousness, or taste consciousness, or touch consciousness. Um, all these things uh, are not available for now for uh, close examination mm -hmm. because the mind takes up all energy. So in meditation you just freeze up the consciousness from the thought process so that you can direct your consciousness to the sense of sense of touch, sense of hearing, sense of seeing. Okay. So this way you begin to feel your uh, bodily awareness or sense consciousness. I, I know in, in meditating through the years, one thing that I've become much more aware of is my connection with all that is. Uh, and I, I, it's also said that, that perhaps all the information exists and it's only a matter of our tapping into it. Uh, can you speak somewhat about how that happens, how genius happens and inspiration and creativity? In Zen, there is a saying, when you know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. When you don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. When you don't know, you know. But when you know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. This is better expressed in my tradition that knowledge is the beginning of ignorance. 
the moment we have begun to know a particular thing, we have lost touch of the cosmos because it gives you a linearity. Mm -hmm. A thought comes in and then it clouds all your understanding. Without thought you can understand the entire cosmos <laughs> because it, you are not worried, you are not giving any orientation. So it's really about coming in right relationship with our thinking process because we need it to get us around town and this kind of basic stuff but we use it in inappropriate ways. That's right. Mm -hmm. But a Siddha doesn't have to use any thoughts at all. Mm -hmm. He just sits and understands everything. And somebody comes and picks him up and drives him to the TV station. That's right. <laughs> okay. And then if he becomes even more specialized, he has the TV station to come to him. <laughs> right. Right. Does this come into this area of personal magnetism, literally creating a magnetic field? Is that what's That's happening? Right. That's why uh, there is a saying that the guru does not go and seek people, but the people seek him out. Mm -hmm. When you are a magnet, the iron filings are attracted towards you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Because it is so powerful that you feel compelled. Right to go and sit in the presence of this person. Yeah, yeah. I've been very surprised in my own experience. I, I had been initiated by another guru of, of the same part of India that you're from about four or five years ago and, and felt very satisfied with my practice and, um, and yet he's far away. You know, I certainly didn't have the personal kind of contact with him, but I, um, I was surprised to have the degree of attraction that I did to you at the time and yet it makes perfect sense because I was taking a very large step in my life and one where I had made a, an intention to the universe to have as much clarity as possible and also to be able to step into a much bigger sense of myself which is really what your teachings are about so there's a perfection in that I know. Um, so, so when someone is at a crossroads like that and they're about to step into a, a new territory, I, a lot comes up, you know. So how can it be advantageous to meditate and to use ritual and these kind of things to be able to take that step to be with the Guru? Well, life is a choice. Everything that you do comes out of choice. And you have to evaluate the, every situation and then make appropriate choices. So people have a choice to think a limited thought or live a limited life or think a lim unlimited thought or live an unlimited life. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is a technology available okay. for you to move from uh, limited thinking to unlimited thinking, limited life to unlimited life. Mm -hmm. So meditation and the rituals are very helpful for you to move from negativity to unlimited life. Mm -hmm. The motivation of course has to come from the individual. The individual is basically responsible. And then commitment is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, If you commit yourself then the results are there, right? Right, right there. And it seems like people often, they, they kind of make a wishy-washy commitment. They say, well, I tried that, I dedicated myself to that, and it didn't work, you know. And, and, and it's because they really didn't. They really didn't put that kind of, because when you do, it does happen, is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I give the example of Mike Tyson. Uh -huh. Mike Tyson has great muscles. Why? Because he has great commitment to the muscles. Mm -hmm. Did we have that kind of mu commitment to developing our body? No. Right. Okay. We didn't care. Mm -hmm. Did he care? Yes. Right, very much. So, commitment mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Whatever you do, you have to do it in a committed way. Mm -hmm whether it is meditation or in or, or other areas of life. And really use discipline to uh, streamline the mind 
and to make appropriate choices to not be drawn here and there and everywhere, I, uh, which often happens. You know, a friend will call or it seems desirable to get involved in entertainment or whatever it happens to be um, because, it, you know, those things are always going to be there to pull f on that commitment. Uh, and yet I know from my own experience that when you keep committed, it strengthens. Well, of course. It's like anything, it needs to be exercised and strengthened. And, and if we keep going, you know, that that becomes much more effective. Um, we have uh, an innate lethargy. Mm. And uh, which drives us not to be critical not to be careful we just want to play hmm. I, mean, I wish we had more time we'll have to do this again the, the show's concluding uh, if people are interested in anything we've had to say there's uh, going to be an address for me at the end send a postcard and and you'll be able to stay in contact with all of us and learn more about what we've discussed here today thanks very much uh, this is frankly speaking and I'm Frankie Lee Slater